Well, I, I work in Costa Rica. It's eight o'clock in the morning here and um, have been in Costa Rica for over 50 years. So, but we're right now we're working in Carpio, which is a poor community on the western edge of San Jose. And we're rejoicing because um, just this week we started using the new building, which we have been praying and dreaming about for years. We've been meeting in a corrugated tin structure, which was um, constructed 27 years ago provisionally. <laughs> and we've been in our corrugated tin structure for for 27 years. And now, thank the Lord, we've been able to make a real, a real building. And uh, it was just really special to have the first service on Sunday. Of course, the building will be used for much, many other things, just the church, tutoring program, counseling center, uh, health teaching, young people's activities, Bible studies. It's a multi-purpose building and we're just praising God for to have this wonderful facility now. Uh, the other thing we're praising God for is the equipment that uh, Memorial Park gave us for the clinic. And you can pray that we'll be able to find the other equipment we're looking for. T just some specific prayer requests. Um, the, we, we have a, a tutoring program for the children in two different sites. And it's an after-school program where the kids look come and, and it's basically helping them to learn to read and basic math, things like that. And then also there's always a Bible lesson as part of every session. But the, the children in Carpio have really have the cards stacked against them because with COVID, virtual learning in a poor community where nobody has computers and have very iffy internet trying to do it with a cell phone and things like that, it just didn't work. And so really the kids have lost two, almost three years of schooling. And, but they kept pushing them ahead in their grades. So we have kids in third grade that haven't learned to read. And, you know, those are the kids that get discouraged and then drop out. And then, you know, it's just a downward spiral from then on. So the tutoring program is so, so important. So pray for the teachers, pray for the kids. The kids that are coming are learning. It's exciting. The parents are, the mothers are happy. But it's a, there's, it's a huge need there in Carpio because so many children are so far behind in their studies. But we're thankful that we have this tool that we can help them and they can um, hopefully get up to speed and stick with school and get ahead and get an education. And then, of course, it's, it's a wonderful opportunity to give the gospel. For me personally, um, a lot of my time is given to helping the refugees the Nicaraguan refugees. And the situation in Nicaragua is worsening and the people are coming, there's new people coming every day. And it's not a picnic in Costa Rica either. It's very difficult in Costa Rica because there aren't jobs for them and there's no social network either. So it's just a really, really difficult struggle. Every day people come to the clinic door telling me their, their sad stories that just make you wanna cry. And uh, so just pray that God will give me wisdom to know how to help them. I can counsel them. I talk to them. I pray with them. And there's, you know, there's a limit to what we can do, but God will give us wisdom to know how to use our limited resources to the best to help these people because they've, they've really been through such, such hard things. I talked to one lady last week. She's all alone in Costa Rica because her husband had been in the protests and then he disappeared, and when they found him, it was his dead body. They killed him, and then they were coming after her. So she had to leave her three children with grandparents someplace else where they would be safe, and she had to flee. It took her three attempts to get across the border, and now she's here. She's so poor, she doesn't even have a telephone, so she can't even contact her family all alone here. It's just, just situations like that just, you know, are so sad. So heartbreaking and it's every day kind of thing. So just pray that God will give me wisdom and love and and the best way to help these people. And, and above all, that through all this, they will come to know Christ. Some of them are believers already. God will strengthen them and hold, keep them firm and steady and strong. And uh, others are, don't know Christ. And so it's a wonderful opportunity. So I would say that would be the prayer request for, for me. Thank you. Thank you, Susan, for all you do. The, the tutoring program, I noticed that you have a new computer lab, but of course that's limited, right? How many computers are in there? 
it was a it was a wonderful donation. They gave uh, we have 19 computers. Right, that's great. But a lot of kids. <laughs> well, I think that the computer lab was to teach people how to use computers because you know a lot of people don't have computers in their homes. So they they you know that's a skill you need now. It's like speaking English and using a computer is practically like learning to read and write now and for getting a job. So, so, and then there's an op there's possibility that we might be able to use the computers for English classes. We well, just heard about a we just heard about a program that's all online with computers and to st to study English, which would be very helpful too. Yeah, I just thought of it because you said that they lost basically three years because they don't have computers and they can't study online. So yeah, right. yeah. Now the schools are in. Are, now the schools are in person. Everything's in person now, and the statistics. Costa Rica is doing very well with COVID. The, the the numbers are coming down, but we're all still wearing masks all the time. The kids wear masks to school. Everybody wears masks everywhere. <laughs>